I'm Philip Sabin, and this video illustrates the gameplay of the latest Full Circle edition of my free Dogfight Total Conversion, which uses the counters and data cards from Libra McCom Wood's excellent Wing Leader series of air combat board games from GMT. Dogfight creates a more focused model of the fighting around the bombers, in which player skill in fighter manoeuvres plays a more important role. The key innovation in Full Circle is that I return to the top-down, 360-degree perspective used in my own simple and generic Angels 1-5 design, published in my book Simulating War and later by Victory Point Games. Previous editions of Dogfight used abstract lateral blocks or perspex stands to reintroduce a 3D element to the 2D side-scrolling perspective used in Winged Leader itself. Full Circle goes much further and combines the fully 3D perspective of Angels 1-5 with Winged Leader's visual and technical distinctions between hundreds of specific aircraft types to obtain the best of both worlds. The key feature of Full Circle is that each flight is represented by two matching counters as shown. The Wing Leader counter tracks the flight's speed in fine detail, and its orientation shows if the flight has been hit or run low on ammo. A smaller plan view counter shows the flight's location and heading on the hex grid. Counters may be placed at the back, middle or front of the big hexes as a direct indication of their speed. Piles of blocks from a block war game like GMT's Europe Engulfed simply and intuitively display the five possible altitude levels. This system captures everything you need to know with no need for counter swapping, markers or tracking dice. You may easily make your own hex grid by printing out 12 copies of the 6x6 hex tile provided in the rules, or by making your own expanded photocopies of parts of an existing hex board. The plan view counters from J.D. Webster's Fighting Wings games work well, but Christian Lemoisin has posted on BoardGameGeek free print-and-play counters covering nearly every plane type required. As shown, a full set of counters, data cards and alternative hex grids based on all six Wing Leader games and add-ons builds into a very impressive collection. But all you need to play a wide variety of scenarios is a single Wing Leader game, a printout of the full circle tracks and hex grid, and a few blocks and plan view counters. To show how the game works, I will play one of the smallest and earliest possible scenarios, set during the Battle for Madrid in late 1936. A small group of Italian SM-81 bombers, escorted by a flight of CR-32 biplanes, is intercepted by one flight each of I-15 and I-16 Type 5 fighters recently arrived from the USSR. Each counter represents around six planes in two VIX. Lee's data cards show the plane's respective technical characteristics. Since the underarmed and ill-protected fighters will find it hard to inflict more hits on the SM-81s than they suffer from the bomber gunners, the interceptors will score two points rather than one for each hit they achieve. However, I give the Nationalists a handicap bonus of three to compensate, so the Republicans will need to inflict multiple hits if they're to offset this handicap and prevail. All the plan view counters are by Christian Lemoisin. The bombers start in the centre of the hex grid, which I made from expanded copies of Tim Allen's lovely map from my own Angels 1-5 game and which, in this scenario, represents wing leader levels 6 to 10. The CR-32s may start anywhere within five hexes of the bombers and up to two levels above. So, since the sun is randomly shining down from the left rear, they opt to deploy three hexes up sun 
at level 9. Their initial energy is 8, four times the SM81 speed rating of 2, giving them an initial airspeed of 1 hex per round. On a D6 roll of 4, the interceptors randomly enter on the up-sun side edge. Their agreed maximum altitude level is 8, but the player opts to raise the slower I-15s to level 9 in exchange for dropping the I-16s to level 7. Had their top altitude bands been different, only the flight with the higher band could have been raised at the expense of the other. Both flights start with energy equal to four times their own speed rating at their starting altitude. The i 15 speed rating at level 9 is a measly 1, but the Mosca's speed rating at level 7 is 4, so their initial energy is 16, and they begin at airspeed 2, as shown by being placed in the middle of their entry hex. The interceptors fly no further on round 1, so play begins with the bombers advancing 1 hex. Faster bombers accumulate progress as shown on the table, and sometimes fly 2 or even 3 hexes, but the sedate SM81s simply fly 1 hex per round. Each hex represents 500 yards, and each round represents 7.5 seconds of action half the timescale in the previous edition of Dogfight, so the bomber's scale speed equates to around 136 miles per hour. Spotting the interceptors two miles away at their 10 o'clock, the escorts face the usual dilemma between sallying to meet them and staying to cover the bombers. The CR-32s opt to hold their course and height for the moment and fly one hex ahead like the SM-81s. Fighters gain or lose energy due to thrust and drag, as shown on the table, depending on their speed rating and current altitude and airspeed. The result for the CR-32s at level 9 with a speed rating and airspeed of 1 is plus 4 minus C, so they gain 4 minus their current climb rating of 3, or 1 energy point. To create smoother and more realistic variation of climb rates across different altitudes and between different aircraft types, I use a supplementary D6 roll whenever energy increases. To save calculations during play, it's best to draw up a simple scenario-specific table of the required rolls in advance, as shown here. At level 9, CR-32s will gain one extra energy point on a roll of 5 or 6. They roll a 5, so their energy increases from its initial 8 to 10. On round 2, the I-15s also opt to fly one hex straight ahead. Like the CR-32s, they gain one energy point from the plus 4 minus C result. But their die roll is 1 rather than the required 6 so their energy increases only from 4 to 5. The faster I-16s decide to try to provoke a reaction from the CR-32s, so they turn right towards them after their first hex of flight. Fighters in full circle may turn 60 degrees after each hex moved, unless limited by g-forces when moving 3 or 4 hexes. At airspeed 2, such single turns cost 1 energy point, and this cancels the 1 energy point gain which the Moscas would otherwise have received from the plus 3 minus C result at their current speed rating of 4 and climb rating of 2, so their energy remains at its initial 16. After the bombers move forward, the CR-32s decide to turn towards the enemy while trading some of their height for speed. They fly one hex forward, turn 60 degrees left, and dive to level 8. At airspeed 1, the turn is free, and they gain two more energy points on a die roll of 6, so the additional 12 points contributed by the dive takes their energy all the way from 10 to 24, accelerating them squarely to airspeed 2. 
On round three, the I-15s again opt to hold their course, but on a roll of six, their energy increases from five to seven. The I-16s also maintain altitude, and to avoid falling behind the bombers, they turn left after their first hex and then weave back right after their second hex to continue facing the CR-32s. Such weaves, which leave the initial facing unchanged, cancel the turn cost, since they actually represent normal flight against the grain of the hex grid. The Moscas hence gain one energy point from their plus three minus C result, with no die roll needed at this height. After bomber movement, the CR-32s rethink their reaction, fearing that the I-16s may speed past to attack the SM-81s unmolested. They pull back up to level nine, thereby cutting their move to one hex despite their airspeed of two. They also turn back right, ready to drop behind the Moscas. Even though their speed rating at level eight had risen to two, they lose one energy point due to drag at airspeed two, and a further point for their turn. Together with the 12 point cost of their climb, this cuts their energy back to the 10 with which they began on round two. On round four, the I-15s maintain their slow but steady convergence with the bombers, gaining just one more energy point on a roll of two. The I-16s take advantage of the CR-32's deceleration by curving left towards the bombers, with the turn cost offsetting any further energy gain. Seeing the danger, the escorts resume their roller coaster progress after bomber movement, diving back down to level 8, turning right to shadow the speeding Moscas, and regaining airspeed 2 with a 13 point energy gain on a roll of 4. On round 5, the I 15s decide that the time has come to speed up themselves to collaborate more effectively with the Moscas. They dive to level 8 and turn right towards their colleagues. On a roll of two, they gain 13 energy points and accelerate to airspeed two, just like the CR-32s. The I-16s fly straight ahead two hexes and gain one energy point from their plus three minus C result as they prepare to curve onto the bomber's tails next round. The CR-32s realise that the only way they can cover the advancing bombers in time is to speed up even more, so they dive two hexes straight ahead to level 7. They lose one energy point due to drag at airspeed 2, but gain 12 more points for their continuing dive, boosting their energy to 34 and accelerating them to airspeed 3. On round 6, the I-15s are one hex too far away to cover the Moscas attack, so they fly two hexes and turn left in hope of diving on the bombers out of the sun on round eight. Since their speed rating at level eight is still one, they lose two energy points due to drag and a further point for turning at airspeed two. If the I-16s attack the SM-81s as planned, the CR-32s could get on their tails with a perfect energy margin for continued pursuit. The I-16s decide instead to dive below the bombers while making a hard left turn to allow the escorts only a deflection shot. They gain 12 energy points from the dive and a further one from their plus three minus C result, but they lose one for turning at airspeed two and four more for making two non-weaving turns with equal turn and speed ratings, as shown on the table. Their energy hence grows only to 26, leaving them still at airspeed two. The CR-32s could continue their screaming dive to level six to catch the Moscas, but the heavy G-forces when diving three hexes would allow them only to make a fleeting deflection shot before overshooting and leaving the bombers exposed to the I-15s. They therefore decide instead to follow in the wake of the advancing bombers, 
by staying at level 7 and making the turns allowed in the first and last hexes of a 3-hex level flight. This lets them shadow the I-16s from above while also threatening the I-15s. The biplanes lose a swinging six energy points to drag for flying so unusually fast. And despite their agility, the hard turn at airspeed 3 costs them a further four points, dropping them straight back to airspeed 2. Now that the bombers have reached the front board section, the back section is cycled to the front to accommodate their forward flight. On round 7, the I-15s weave left to stay out of reach of the escorts as they approach the bombers from up sun. Their energy drops two more to 16. The I-16s continue their hard left turn to escape the CR-32s or to draw them away while the I-15s engage the bombers. In the thicker air at level 6, they gain no energy at airspeed 2, despite their speed rating of 4. So the hard turn costs them 5 energy points, due to their lack of agility compared to the biplanes. Seeing that the Moskers will be out of the fight for some time, the CR-32s stop pursuing them, and reverse their bank to make a hard right diving turn, to cover the advancing bombers instead. They lose 4 of the 12 energy points from the dive due to drag in this hard turn, and they opt to lose a further 4 points by throttling back, so that their energy increases only to 28, keeping them just at airspeed 2. On round 8, the I-15s at airspeed 2 cannot dive 2 levels to bounce the CR-32s themselves by stopping short. So, they continue with their original plan of attacking the bombers out of the sun, counting on their overall energy superiority to escape subsequent retribution by the escorts. They lose another two energy points due to drag at level 8, but gain 12 for their dive, taking them to 26. Combat in full circle uses a common D10 roll, when both sides fire as they do in this instance. Each side applies its own modifiers as shown, and scores a hit on an unmodified 10, or if the result reaches the range shown in the table. The bomber gunners get no modifiers in this case, so they will hit the I-15s with their protection rating of 3-4 on 9 or 10. The I-15s get bonuses for engaging multi-crew bombers and for diving out of the sun. So with their firepower of 0 against the SM-81's protection rating of 4, they will score 1 hit on 8 or 9 and 2 hits on 10, since with the plus 2 modifier this roll will exceed the range required. The actual roll is only 2 so neither side hits the mark in this first exchange of fire. Even though it costs them another five precious energy points, the I-16s continue their hard left turn for a third successive round, completing a full circle as they strive to avoid falling too far behind the action. After the bombers move forward, the CR-32s climb one hex onto the tails of the I-15s. The thicker air at level 6 costs them 2 energy points in drag, and together with the 12 point loss for the climb, this is just enough to drop them to airspeed 1. The I-15s would not normally be able to evade the attack, since the plane's turn ratings are equal, and they lack rear view canopies. But the fact that the I-15s just fired is balanced by the friendly fire risks posed to the escorts by the bomber gunners. And since the CR-32s have a lower airspeed, the Soviet biplanes may evade, after all. This cancels the bonus which the escorts receive for being in the same heading as their targets. But, due to the I-15s' weak protection, they will still hit on a roll of 9 or 10, in this one opportunity before the enemy outdistance them. On 9, they get lucky, and the I-15s take one hit, 
recorded by reversing their counter on the energy track. Cursing their bad luck in these initial combats, the surviving I-15s on round 9 climb back up to level 8 to escape the CR-32s, whose airspeed is too low to climb this round. The Soviet biplanes attempt a tight right turn, a special manoeuvre when flying just one hex, to reunite with the Moskas for a better coordinated assault in the rounds to come. Since the Republican fighters outnumber the nationalist ones, they suffer from poor situational awareness SA, due to the difficulty of distinguishing friends and foes and this normally causes a minus two penalty to their tight turn rolls. However, the penalty is negated in this instance since the I-15s began stacked with the CR-32s. So the plus two bonus for their agility means they automatically succeed in making two successive turns in their first hex and then advancing into a new hex adjacent to their initial hex, as shown. They lose four energy points to drag on top of the 12 point cost of the climb, so their energy falls to 10, dropping them back to airspeed 1. The I-16s at level 6 curve gently round to chase after the bombers, with the one point cost of the turn leaving them just barely clinging on to airspeed 2. As the bombers move on, the CR-32s decide that their best course is to shadow the I-15's tight turn from one level below. With similar biplane agility and no SA problems, their manoeuvre automatically succeeds. At airspeed 1, it costs only two energy points, but frustratingly, this exactly offsets the two points gained from the plus 4 minus C result at a climb rating of 2. So, the escorts remain at energy 14 and are not quite able to accelerate to airspeed 2. On round 10, the I-15s reverse bank and attempt to tight left turn so as to draw the CR-32s away from the Moskas. This time, they did not begin at the same height as the escorts, so the SA penalty offsets their agility bonus and they need to make a d6 roll of three or more to avoid ending in their first hex having turned just 60 degrees. On five, they succeed, and the same die roll gives them two rather than one energy points at level eight and airspeed one. So, as with the CR-32s, their net energy remains unchanged. The I-16s speed straight ahead in pursuit of the bombers taking advantage of their speed rating of 4, which even in the thicker air at level 6 means they can maintain airspeed 2 without decelerating as the biplanes would. If all goes well, they should be able to climb to start engaging the SM-81s on round 13. The CR-32s decide to stop chasing the I-15s and instead continue their tight right turn while diving to level 6 themselves, so as to pursue the I-16s, which now pose the most immediate threat to the advancing bombers. As before, the escort's tight turn succeeds automatically, and their only net energy change is the 12-point gain for the dive, which accelerates them to airspeed 2. On round 11, the I-15's main priority, now they've escaped pursuit, is to stop the CR-32s disrupting the Moskas' impending attack on the bombers. They dive back to level 7 and try to continue their tight left turn. On a roll of 6, they once more have the good luck to succeed and to gain an extra energy point into the bargain. Their net 12-point gain for the dive takes them firmly to airspeed 2 and leaves them well placed to cover their colleagues. The Moskas close the range to the bombers, again with no net energy change. The CR-32s curve gently right in pursuit of the Moskas, but the turn and the thicker air at level 6 cost them three energy points, increasing their disadvantage 
compared to the vengeful I-15s. On round 12, the I-15s fly two hexes ahead to pressure the CR-32s, losing just one energy point thanks to being at their optimum height of level 7. The I-16s reach a position below the bombers, with their energy unchanged as before, ready to climb onto the tails of the SM-81s and begin an extended engagement next round. The CR-32s could weave right to avoid the I-15s for now, but since it would be hard to evade them for long enough to catch and engage the Moskers, they decide instead to climb and make an automatically successful tight right turn for a head-on pass on their tormentors, in the hope of turning the tables and at least stopping the I-15s engaging the bombers in due course. The trouble is that due to starting at level 6 and airspeed 2, this manoeuvre costs them a further 5 precious energy points, in addition to the 12-point cost of the climb dropping them all the way to Energy 6. The escorts opt to hold their fire, to avoid confirming their hostile identity, and so letting the Soviet pilots hit them on a roll of 9 or 10, rather than only 10, with their SA penalty. On a roll of 7, the likeliest outcome, of no effect, occurs. The backboard section rotates forward for a second time, at the end of the round. On round 13, the I-15s opt not to accept the escort's challenge to an indecisive circling fight, but instead curve forward in the hope of attacking the bombers out of the sun again, before the CR-32s can catch them. They lose two energy points this round due to their turn. The Moskers at last climb for their first attack on the SM-81s with the 12-point cost cutting their energy to only 3. Both sides receive the bonus for being in the same heading, with the I-16s also getting the bonus for engaging multi-crew bombers. This means that both will hit on rolls of 8 or more, with the Moskers scoring an extra hit on 10, at the cost of running low on ammo and having to break off their attack. On a roll of 6, the combat yields no result as yet. The CR-32s reverse bank and make a tight turn to face forward again, relieved that the I-15s are no longer behind them. They opt to remain at level 7 and airspeed 1 for now, to rebuild their energy before resuming their pursuit through the thicker air at level 6. The 2-point energy gain from their plus 4 minus C result at a climb rating of 2 means their net energy remains the same, despite their tight turn. On round 14, the I-15s gradually close the range with the bombers, at the cost of one energy point. The I-16s gain two energy from their plus four minus C result, and continue braving the rear gunner's fire. On a roll of three, the struggle remains indecisive for now. The CR-32s stay at level 7 to take advantage of the free turn at airspeed 1, and their energy at last recovers somewhat to 8. On round 15, the I-15s lose another energy point as they catch up with the SM-81s. The I-16s gain two more energy now they're down to airspeed 1 but on a roll of four, the bomber's fire continues to deter them from closing for a decisive engagement. The CR-32s turn forward again directly behind the bombers and dive back to level six to resume the long process of catching them. Since they're still at airspeed one, they gain two more energy points in addition to the 12 from the dive, taking their energy to 22. On round 16, the I-15s could curve right for a beam attack on the SM-81s, but they prefer to leave them to the Moskers for now and fly ahead, ready to climb to an up-sun position first. Their energy drops by another point to 16. The I-16s gain two more energy, but on a roll of two, their standoff with the bomber gunners continues. 
The CR32s fly forward two hexes at the usual cost of two energy points in the thicker air. On round 17, the I-15s climb one hex to level 8 and turn right, ready to bounce the SM81s as they did on round 8. The turn increases their net energy loss to 14, so they end close to stalling with an energy of only 2. In their last round before they make way temporarily for the I-15s, the Moskers gain two more energy, but on a roll of four they have no more success than before in hitting the bombers. Relieved that the SM-81s are holding out so well, the CR-32s continue closing on them, with their energy dropping again to 18. On round 18, the I-15s dive out of the sun against the bombers, while throttling back slightly so that they remain at airspeed 1. The bombers will hit on 9 or 10, while the fighters will hit once on 8 or 9 and twice on 10. The roll is 7, so the frustrated Soviet pilots just fail to hit yet again. The I-16s cannot stack with their colleagues, so they dive to level 6 with the 14 energy point gain taking their energy to 25. The CR-32s have their own frustrations, since they end their flight one hex short of being able to engage the diving Moskers, and with their energy dropping fast towards airspeed 1. The rear board section cycles forward for a third time as the fighter flights draw together for a climactic confrontation. On round 19, the I-15s attempt a tight right turn to circle behind the escorts again. Their D6 roll of 3 is just enough to offset their poor SA penalty and allow the manoeuvre. The 2 point cost of the turn is balanced by the plus 4 minus C gain at this optimum height for the flight. The I-16s climb back to level 7 to re-engage the bombers with their energy falling by 12 points to 13. On a roll of 2, their awful luck continues and there is no result. The CR-32s fly beneath their quarry at last, but the extra drag at level 6 comes home to roost and their airspeed falls to 1, preventing them climbing to attack the Moskers next round. On round 20, the I-15s continue their tight right turn on a roll of 4, with their energy again remaining unchanged. The Moskers make a final effort to hit the bombers, with their airspeed increasing to 2 in the nick of time to escape the approaching escorts next round. On a roll of 10, they at last hit the jackpot, since their plus 2 bonus raises their score to 12, exceeding the required range of 10 to 11 and so inflicting two hits and not just the one hit which always occurs on such a maximum roll. The downside is that the bomber gunners inflict a return hit and the Moskers also run low on ammo. This combination means that the I-16's energy marker is reversed and inverted and they will have to break off the action next round. Furious at arriving just too late to stop or seek revenge on the escaping Moskers, the CR-32s take comfort from the fact that their handicap still gives them a narrow lead by five victory points to four. They make a tight right turn with no net energy change so as to shift their focus to the I-15s, hoping to stop them inflicting any further hits in the up to 20 rounds still to play. On round 21, as the I-16s break away, the I-15s curve gently forward and dive to level 6, gaining 14 energy points which take them to the top of the airspeed 2 band as they strive to exploit their superior energy by catching the bombers again before the escorts can intercept them. The CR-32s, already at level 6, reverse bank and make a tight left turn with no net energy change, so as to avoid falling too far behind the SM-81s and cover them from the flank 
should the I-15s target them again. On round 22, the I-15s weave right to get directly behind the bombers and lose two energy points as they too start to suffer from the thicker air at this altitude. The slower CR-32s stop turning and so gain two energy points from the plus four minus C result, accelerating them to airspeed two. On round 23, the I-15s fly two hexes forward but end by turning right to threaten the escorts. The extra drag from the turn drops their energy by three points to 23. The CR-32s react by making a climbing left turn to level 7. This costs 15 of their 16 energy points and leaves them on the brink of stalling. On round 24, the I-15s make their own climbing left turn in the hope of getting a shot at the escorts. They too lose 15 energy points, but end with the much healthier total of 8. The CR-32s evade attack by making a tight right turn. The two-point cost is offset by the gain from their plus 4 minus C result, just saving them from stalling and leaving the fight as the rear board section cycles forward for a fourth time. On round 25, the I-15s opt to fly one hex forward and gain two energy points in the hope of accelerating to airspeed two first and thereby catching the equally agile but energy-starved escorts. The CR-32s decide to reverse bank and make a tight left turn to face back towards the bombers, at the cost of no increase to their pitiful energy of one. On round 26, the I-15s threaten the escorts again, while gaining another two energy points. As on round 24, the CR-32s evade by a tight right turn after reversing bank yet again. Their aerobatics are gaining precious time, but at the cost of an ever-widening energy differential. On round 27, the I-15s repeat their successful tactic of accumulating energy accelerating to the brink of airspeed 2. To stay out of reach, the CR-32s make only a gentle left turn to face forward again, with their energy at last recovering slightly to 3. On round 28, the I-15s accelerate to airspeed 2, but are torn between continuing to threaten the escorts or trying to catch the bombers with enough time to score a hit before the relieving CR-32s arrive. They make the fateful choice to turn right against the escorts to disrupt their potential pursuit. The CR-32s could continue their gentle left turn and allow the I-15s a fleeting deflection shot. But since the Republicans would win the game if their attack succeeded, and since the lone I-15 flight no longer suffers the poor SA which gave a firing penalty against the Nationalist fighters, the escorts opt instead to tighten their turn and face the threat at the expense of gaining no more energy. On round 29, the I-15s could stop short to attack the escorts head-on without needing to throttle back. On the 20% chance that both flights hit, the contest would be a draw. However, the Soviet pilots decide it's better to exploit their energy advantage by diving under the CR-32s while curving gently left to pursue the bombers. The net gain of 10 energy points takes their energy to 26. The CR-32s respond by reversing bank and turning tightly right to face forward again, while diving to level 6 themselves. The 12 energy point gain takes them to airspeed 2 by the skin of their teeth. On round 30, the I-15s would like to weave left towards the bombers, but this would allow the escorts to catch and engage them. So instead, they fly two hexes straight ahead at the usual cost of two energy points in the thicker air. The problem for the CR-32s is that unlike the I-15s, they have no spare energy to maintain airspeed 2. So they bounce back to airspeed 1 
as the rear board section cycles forward for the fifth time. On round 31, the I-15s weave left towards the bombers for another two energy points, as the frustrated escorts drop back out of range. The CR-32s fly one hex forward and temporarily regain airspeed 2, thanks to their plus 4 minus C result at airspeed 1 and climb rating 2. On round 32, the I-15s weave left underneath the bombers for two more energy points. Their final turn reversal would be prohibited due to the risk of collision if they were already at the bomber's altitude. The CR-32s make a matching left weave, but their airspeed falls back again to 1, prompting worrying memories of how a similar energy shortfall stopped them catching the Moskers in time on round 20. On round 33, the I-15s climb to engage the bombers for the third time, after two failed passes out of the sun. Their energy falls by 14 to 6. The chances of hitting or being hit are the same as for the I-16s during their prolonged tail attacks on the SM-81s. On a roll of 8, the combat is resolved much more quickly than for the Moskers, and both sides suffer a hit. Since the I-15s were hit on round 8 by the CR-32s, this second hit means that their energy marker is inverted as well as reversed, and they will break off the action next round. The frustrated CR-32s are still three rounds from being able to climb to counterattack the I-15s, so all they can do is watch as the surviving Soviet biplanes escape. The Republicans score six victory points for their three hits on the SM-81s, while the Nationalists score three points for their handicap and three points for their one hit on the Moskers and two hits on the I-15s. The contest is thus a hard-fought draw. The Republicans had much worse luck in their initial combat roles, with only the CR-32s scoring a hit against the odds in their fleeting initial counter-attack on the I-15s. However, what stopped the Nationalists converting this better luck into game victory was the CR-32's fatal loss of their initial energy advantage due to high-speed drag, energy-sapping aerobatics and the thicker air at level 6. This left them critically short of energy when they most needed it to catch and counter-attack the Republican planes when they matched speeds with the slow bombers for prolonged tail engagements. The I-15s, by contrast, used their initial energy boost to good effect, first to distract the escorts from pursuing the Moskers, and then to sneak past the CR-32s to attack the SM-81s themselves. The game showed well why biplane fighters, despite their incomparable agility, as reflected in my tight turn rules, were superseded by clumsier but faster monoplanes like the I-16 which were better able to sustain this crucial energy contest. Dogfight Full Circle is intended to complement rather than supersede my existing Dogfight Deluxe conversion, which is showcased in its own video. The earlier game plays more quickly due to its fewer, longer rounds, and requires fewer extra components on top of those provided in Wing Leader itself especially when using Al Canamore's Vassal module shown here. Full Circle sits in between Dogfight Deluxe and my much more tactical top-down conversion Fighter Duel Deluxe, which models individual planes and has rounds representing just three seconds each. Full Circle gives the 3D manoeuvres of interceptors and escorts more of the tactical flavour of Fighter Duel while retaining the grand tactical scale of dogfight and the focus on protecting or assailing bombers rather than combating enemy fighters for its own sake. Dogfight Full Circle is only one of the new free air games I've designed since posting the deluxe editions of my Dogfight, Fighter Duel and Canvas Aces trilogy in 2021. I've also recently created Jet Duel, which models clashes between flights of jet fighters from 1950 to 1991 by combining data from Gary Morgan's old game Flight Leader with mechanisms developed from Fighter Duel, including that system's unique AI rules. 
For those who prefer greater simplicity and abstraction, my fighter duel light and counter air games model generic World War II fighter tactics and modern attacks on integrated air defences, incorporating jets, SAMs and AAA. These last two designs are notable not only for their simplicity, but also for a complete absence of luck, making them challenging chess-like contests in which player skill alone determines who will prevail. For more details of these and my many other designs, just Google Sabin Wargames. It remains only to thank Lee Brimacom Wood for the elegant components and aircraft data in his Wing Leader series, and the other game artists whose work I've incorporated into my own Dogfight Full Circle playset, especially Christian Limoisin with his beautiful and comprehensive plan view counters. Like my other free conversions, Full Circle shows how much added enjoyment may be had from the best existing game components, without adding to the glut of new freestanding board games competing for players' attention. I hope that this video encourages you to try my designs, or to discover the fun of tweaking games to your own personal satisfaction.